Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be showing you the Cube Grid tool on Unreal Engine 5. The Cube Grid tool is great for rapid prototyping your levels or level block outs. First of all, launch Unreal Engine 5, go to Games, then Third Person Template, and click Create. Once Unreal Engine 5 is open, what I like to do is clear the scene. So first of all, let's click on all these blocks and get rid of them. With everything on the scene clear, make sure you keep the player start. Now go to the top left where it says select mode and click on the modeling tab. A new window will appear and under the poly model tab click on the cube GR symbol. You'll notice a grid appeared on your scene. I'm going to use this grid to show you some of the tools that can be used in this cube grid mode to help you prototype a level block out. So first of all, let's click and drag to resize our shape. Then come to the pull tool and click. This will pull out the geometry or the model to create a cube. Now instead of clicking the pull tab, what we can actually do instead is press E on the keyboard. And you can press this as many times as you like to increase the height. Next, let's try the push tab. Now with this cube still selected, if we press push or Q on the keyboard, we can decrease the size. Now, if you select a smaller space within this cube and then use the push, you'll create a hole inside your cube. This can be great for creating doors or windows or anything like that. Now let's try the slide back and slide forward actions. To slide back, let's either click on the action or press Shift and E. This allows you to move the grid without creating any models. And then once you do want to create a model, simply press E and you can create a model that's separate. Let's select these sides and then slide back and then press E. Slide back and E. You could use this as a jumping platform. Let's say we wanted to edit this platform to make it like these two. What we can do is use the slide forward, then press Q. Now we've got four of the same platforms. Or we can press E again to add or extrude. Now let's show you corner mode. Let's say we wanted to make a ramp here on our platform. Let's select these cubes, then select corner mode. Select the two vertex that you want to create the ramp on and then press E. You can keep pressing E to make the ramp bigger. Finally, let's look at the flip action tool. This tool is pretty self-explanatory, but let's have a look at it just to see. So let's extend this platform and let's say we want to make another platform on the other side. Let's press flip or T and then press Q. Then we can press E again and make another platform. Alright, so now that we've looked at all the actions, let's see what we can do with our grid because our grid's not in level with our model right now. So to move it, all we have to do is press Ctrl and middle mouse button, click, and we can move the grid to wherever we want. This can be really useful for if we want to make models at a different angle. All we have to do is rotate the grid and then extrude. Let's say we want to do it at a 90 degree ang angle. Create a bit of a wall here. Let's select the grid. Press Q and then E. And then let's extend this out. So now our player would have to walk around this platform and then jump over. So have a play around with the tools and see what sort of platforming level you can create. And then once you're finished, click on this complete button at the bottom. Once you've pressed complete, you'll see that this whole mesh is now one static mesh. If you come to the details panel on the right, come down to your static mesh and press on this folder with the magnifying glass 
you'll see that it's added or generated a static mesh for you to keep reusing this. So if you wanted, you could drag this onto your level to use again. So you've got your level looking how you'd like it to. But what if you want to add a material to a certain parts of the block out to make it stand out? So select one of your models, then select the modeling mode again. And in the attributes tab, come to this matte ed button, click on that. This should now open this modeling tab. And if you come down to materials, click on the drop down box. And then let's select a material to paint onto our actual model. I'm going to go with this concrete tiles. Now this will create the whole of the model concrete tiles. But what if you wanted to paint a separate material onto a certain part of your level? So if we press this add element button and then select another material, I'm going to go with this moss and then select active material and change it to moss. We can decrease the size of the brush and select certain parts of the level. So I want to make this centerpiece mossy. All we have to do is click and select the parts that we want to paint. Once we've painted the area that we want to change the color of our material, click assign active material. As you see, this middle block is now mossy and the rest is concrete. Once you're happy, press accept and this will apply. Now if we look at our other model that we've obviously put in from the content browser, you can see that that's changed too. That's because this is the same model. So whatever you apply to this model will change to this model. Now to fix that, come into the content drawer and find the actual mesh. And if you want to keep it the same model, but just change the material, just duplicate it. And, and this will now be a separate static mesh. So if we change this one, and accept, we can see that this is completely different to the other mesh. So now we're happy with our level, let's come out of the modeling mode, select our player start and move it to the start of the level. Now all that's left to do is to press play. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and it helps you to create quick level blockouts for your games.